Today we're gonna have a look at how to wash your white clothes. We're gonna go through the entire process here and by the end of the video you will know exactly what to do yourself. So the first thing that we need to do when washing our whites is that we want to separate them from the darker clothes. So the reason we're doing this is because color bleeding is a serious problem. If you ever found yourself with uh, clothes suddenly turning a little pinkish and then you found a red sock in, and that's what we're talking about there. On the same topic, you wanna make sure that you have emptied out all the pockets and other things where you could keep items that may sneak into the washer here. So the next thing that you want to do here, and this is particularly the first couple of times you do this, is that you want to familiarize yourself a little bit with the labels on each of the garments. This is important because this will dictate what kind of washing machine settings we're going to use once we toss this into the washer. So for example, this garment allows for up to 60 degrees and it does not allow for using a chlorine bleach product. So that's something very important to note. I'm going to look through the rest of this as well. So the next thing that we can do here before we toss it into the washer is that we can look at the individual stains on the garments. In order to kind of preserve the rest of the clothes and not put them through the harsh process of removing stains, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna pre-treat stains on each of the garments that have really serious stains on them. This way we can use a more gentle cycle on the washing machine and your garments are going to last for a long time. So I have brought up my bed sheet and it has a coffee stain. Yes, it is coffee. <laughs> And what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to pre-treat it with enzyme-based uh, spray here. Any stain remover is going to work fine. If you don't have stain remover on hand, mixing hydrogen peroxide together with baking soda is very effective. You also have distilled white vinegar. It's really great for this type of application. And under instructions for this one in particular, it said I should leave it on for five minutes so that it can kind of do its magic here on the stain here. So since I'm doing this, I'm not gonna have to add any harsh chemicals into the washing process. If you have anything else to stain, you would also put this on them now. I suggest we go ahead and load up the washer. <laughs> so I'm gonna take all my whites here and I'm gonna load them into the washer here. So one thing that is important to note here, once we load this into the washing machine, is whether or not any of the items are like really uh, delicate. In that case, using something like a mesh bag it's going to work great to kind of preserve the clothes even further. But in this instance, I have my bedding as well as some towels, like uh, hand cloths. So I'm not going to go ahead and put any mesh bags on those. From here, turning on the washer. When we're picking a cycle, if you have one called whites, that's going to work fantastically as it is designed for whites. Especially if you have a lot of stains and you don't want to pre-treat them. Using the white cycle is good. It is a long cycle that focuses a lot on removing stains. You know, white clothes get stained horribly. <laughs> so using something like a white cycle can be a good option in that case. For us, I think we're going to go ahead and use a cotton cycle. And as I was looking through my garments, I saw that the maximum temperature. So as I have looked through this in the past, I have seen all the little tags. And while some say I can put 60 degrees, some of them do say all the way down to 40. So the problem if I put one that says 60 together with one that says 40 is that I can't put everything on 60. That way it's, it's going to damage the one that can only handle 40. So we have to go out from the lowest one uh, in order to not damage the other ones. And the same thing goes with other restriction. If you have one garment that can handle bleach, another one that can't handle bleach, you have to go up from the one that can't handle it, right? Otherwise you have to separate these clothes as well. So I'm gonna turn it down to 40 here, and I'm gonna use a pretty high spin cycle here, as I saw these clothes were a little bit uh, dirty here. And uh, from here we're going to load up the actual tray. So I have, brought out this detergent especially made for whites. However, this is a pretty harsh detergent. So what I'm gonna do instead is that I'm gonna bring out a gentler detergent as we don't need this heavy duty one since we've already pre-treated the stains. So I'm going to use this more standard one, more gentle one. And you can read on the backside how much detergent you actually need to use. This is going to depend on the size of your load. If you have hard water, you know, if you find like lime scale, the, the white stuff on, for example, your faucet, then you need to increase the amount of detergent you use as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and load that up into the wash tray here. 
You have three trays, especially on these front loaders. So you have the wash, the pre-wash and the fabric softener. We're gonna forego using the pre-wash one. If you have something like a stain remover that you want to put inside the pre-wash, you would take that now and put that in a pre-wash tray. But in that case, you need to actually turn on the pre-wash setting. And also we want to load up with fabric softener if we want to use it. A cool hack for your hair, if you have distilled white vinegar, this also works great in the fabric softener tray. I have actually started using this exclusively now instead of fabric softener. It doesn't have the same smell, but it does have a lot of the same effects. Also, it's really good for your clothes. It's gonna fluff them up. It's going to help remove any remaining smell. If you like the natural smell of your clothes, 5% vinegar is going to be fantastic. So I'm going to put about the same amount there. And then from here, it is as simple as closing up the tray here, like that. So let's just get started here. And I'll see you in two hours and 45 minutes. All right, so the laundry is finally done here. So it is time to move it over to the dryer. Now we can use a drying rack to dry this as well. But for this circumstance, we are going to put it in the dryer because it's going to be a lot better on these uh, items that I like to fluff up. I found that especially things like towels tends to be a little bit um, almost crusty, I would call it, if you don't put it in a dryer. The vinegar does help with that and so does the fabric softener, but just overall I do prefer to put it in the dryer. I wanted to mention here that if you want to dry your clothes on a drying rack, I have made a video on that in the past that you can check out. But for loading up the dryer here, let me just show you. And we actually have a little guest here today, huh? Do you also want to dry your clothes? Yeah, don't, diva, huh? All right, so in order to use the dryer, what we're going to do is that we're going to put all the clothes in here. Now we don't want to overstuff the dryer either. We want to go out again like we did when we were washing. We want to go out from the lowest settings, so or the weakest garment as I like to say. So if one of your garments can't handle high heat drying, but another can, you need to go out from the one that can't handle it. So I am going to go ahead and put this at one of the lower temperatures. This means it's going to take longer time to dry up, but it also does consume less power and it is more gentle on your clothes. So I'm just gonna start that up here and I'm gonna get started on filming the next video, which will be how to wash your uh, sports clothes, your workout clothes. So if you're into that, I'm gonna link it here once it's done. I'm also gonna link that uh, how to dry your clothes on a drying rack video in case you need that and uh, yeah. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.